Vice President of the United States. And she said, I'd like to show it to you. And so here this beautiful woman standing there with me. I'm thinking, what the hell? <laughs> so I got up, gave her the vice president's seat. You know, want to sit next to the president? So I slid it over to the president. Well, by the time she got over to show him, she was in his chair with him. <laughs> and I was telling Barbara, there is a great picture the White House photographer got. Uh, and then, you know, you think I'm kid, kid, I'm not kidding. I'll tell you what. Made the president look better than he's looked in a long time. <laughs> I, uh, look, folks, um, it's presumptuous of me to say this, but uh, um, I kind of feel like uh, this is family. I, uh, uh, you've been with me, and I've been with you since a, since a 30 year old kid in the United States Senate early in the night in 1973, after I got sworn in. And so it's an honor to stop by. Abe said to me, I know you have another event you committed to tonight, and can't you leave and just stop by? And I said, no, I can't, Abe. And then I, as we Catholics say, my conscience started to bother me. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And so I was worried I might go to hell. And so I, uh, I left and I'm going back. I, it's a delight to be here. Be, 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 besides, it's your 100th anniversary. In your 50th anniversary, the only Catholic president in the history of the United States of America spoke to you. And I figured, what the hell, your 100th, the only vice presidents of Catholics should speak to you. I know, I know the vast majority of people in America think I'm Jewish, but I'm really Catholic. I am really Catholic. I was up at Gratz College a while ago, and uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, a rabbi from Wilmington, uh, came in, I was speaking, and and it was it was it was on a Sunday. And have you ever been to Gratz College? They got this sort of auditorium on one side, and then you step down into an atrium that is uh, all uh, all a flagstone, and then you go up out through the doors. And so I was speaking, and and my man who educated me for real in uh, in Delaware, the rabbi of um, uh, um, the. Uh, I was trying to think of the name of the, the, the temple, Beth Emmet. And, um, and so uh, I was speaking, and uh, and there were double doors that walked in. And they were sort of like, and they opened the doors. And he, you know how so sometimes older people used to wear those big, thick, crepe sole shoes, you know, the squeak when you walk. And all of a sudden, the doors came open and banged against the pews, and in walks my rabbi. And so he's walking up to the front, and his shoes are squeaking, and I said that, uh, well, sure, I'm asking a true story. I used to try to ease the tension. I said, my rabbi is here. So he sat down and we, I went on with my speech afterwards. And a lot of, not a lot, but about a half a dozen older ladies standing in the nation as I was walking out. And one of them grabbed me and said, Joe, tell them. Tell them you're Jewish. Tell them. <laughs> I said, in my heart, <laughs> but no, I'm not. She said, but you're rabbi. And so I, uh, I've been uh, educated by, uh, by the Anti-Defamation League and a lot of other good people who are in this room. You've been with me, and I, I think it's fair to say in every important issue, in every issue, I can't think of a single issue we've ever disagreed on. And one of the things you should know about the organization you're honoring tonight is the credibility of any group up on the Hill or in the, in the White House rest upon the knowledge that whatever 
that group says, the spokesman of that group says, is true. They tell the truth. And they don't try to sugarcoat to make it here, to make it. The one thing about the ADL, you always, you always, you always just stated the facts and have told the truth. That's why you're such a powerful influence in, in, in this country. And I look out there, and Bob Sugarman, or Bob, you here? Bob is an old friend. And there you go, Bob. Bob's an old friend. And Bob's about to become chairman of the conference of presidents of major American Jewish organizations. Bob, congratulations. Now that you're chairman, don't pretend you don't know me, okay? <laughs> don't pretend you don't know me. I, uh, you know, I, I've now ruined his reputation by acknowledging our friendship. But, uh, look, folks, um, uh, when John Kennedy was here 50 years ago, uh, here's what he said about you all. He said, quote, your tireless pursuit of equality and treatment for all Americans has made a lasting and substantial contribution to our democracy. And 50 years later, what I'd say to you was, and I mean this sincerely, you've become America's conscience. You have become the conscience of this country. No matter what the issue, you've been a pillar of the Jewish community, but you reach out and you have reached out your embrace for all communities, all communities. You have worked in prejudice and bigotry. Your support when I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee for Civil Liberties and Civil Rights. Your efforts to advance equality. You've defended the democratic ideals that represent the most sacred values, not of our country, but of humanity. You've stuck to your mission, and some of us have tried to stick with you. We have fought, I go back, we were talking about this, Abe and I, back in the 70s, when I first got to the Senate, you're already fighting against anti-Semitism. Remember the days when we were talking about refusings, and how we were all trying to open up opportunities here being of my age, I know. But you were always there. You were there in every single, in every domestic civil rights issue. You fought a lot of battles. And back in the 70s, as I said, uh, I remember one vividly, and that was advocating for an Israeli-Egyptian peace. We also go back to the days which split the community on the floor when I introduced legislation to not to sell the AWACS to the Saudis. And a lot of people that is not about me, it's about you. Um, there's not a single issue that I can think of that's been raised to a national level about equal treatment, about decency, about how all human beings should be treated. You haven't been there. And today, you know, we talked about it. It just, the president thought I was on, you know, going down memory lane or something. But what did we talk about? We talked about immigration. You're in the forefront. might have heard I got in a little trouble for endorsing gay marriage. Um, <laughs> what was the fight that you've all been engaged in? Again, I was that was a joke. This community has educated me. Educated me in my home state. The whole notion of the, the gay and lesbian and transgender community. You've been in the forefront. And long before, long before any other advocacy group but lesbian and gays. And so, uh, and you're, uh, you're speaking up, which was, I'm so proud of working with the president. You're speaking up when he, in fact, uh, opened up military combat units for women. The whole idea is not that you want anybody in combat. But you think that whatever the capacity a person has, regardless of their gender, they should be able to pursue. What's at stake is, from the time I've been engaged, and since I was 29, with the prospect and the promises, I think, almost there. My four granddaughters have every single solitary 
right and opportunity my grandson has, without any exception. That's what you guys are about. So folks, as I said, it's an honor. It's an honor to have worked with Abe and predecessors for the last 40 years. And uh, because of you, we are a better, more humane, more decent community. Everybody, my dad used to say, that every single solitary person is entitled to be treated with dignity. That's what you do. It's as basic as that. So ladies and gentlemen, the consequence of that, you're the most influential, the most listened to, and the most respectful organization in town. You are the conscience of our larger community. I thank you for that, and I wish you another 100.